This article lists verifiable spaceflight-related accidents and incidents resulting in fatality or near-fatality during flight or training for manned space missions, and testing, assembly, preparation or flight of manned and unmanned spacecraft. Not included are accidents or incidents associated with Intercontinental Ballistic Missile ICBM tests, unmanned space flights not resulting in fatality or serious injury, or Soviet or German rocket-powered aircraft projects of World War II. Also not included are alleged unreported Soviet space accidents, which are considered fringe theories by a majority of historians. As of 2018, there have been 18 astronaut and cosmonaut fatalities during spaceflight. Astronauts have also died while training for space missions, such as the Apollo 1 launch pad fire which killed an entire crew of three. There have also been some non-astronaut fatalities during spaceflight-related activities. Astronaut fatalities In the statistics below, astronaut is applied to all space travelers to avoid the use of astronaut, cosmonaut. During spaceflight As of December 2018, in flight accidents have killed 18 astronauts. In four separate incidents, NASA astronauts who died on duty are memorialized at the Space Mirror Memorial at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex in Merritt Island, Florida. Cosmonauts who died on duty under the Soviet Union were generally honored by burial at the Kremlin Wall Necropolis in Moscow. No Soviet or Russian cosmonauts have died during spaceflight since 1971. There have been a total of five fatal in-flight accidents, three of them flew above the Karman line, and one was intended to do so. In each case, the entire crew was killed. <laughs> During training or testing In addition to accidents during space flights, 13 astronauts, test pilots, and other personnel have been killed during training and test flights. Topic: Non-fatal incidents during space flight. Apart from actual disasters, a number of missions resulted in some very near misses and also some training accidents that nearly resulted in deaths. Non-fatal incidents during training Spaceflight-related accidents and incidents during assembly, testing, and preparation for flight of manned and unmanned spacecraft have occasionally resulted in injuries or the loss of craft since the earliest days of space programs. List Topic nineteen sixty to nineteen sixty nine. Three of the five Lunar Landing Research and Training Vehicles (LLRV and LLTV) were destroyed in crashes near Houston, Texas. 1968 May 6, LLRV No. 1 crashed at Ellington AFB, Texas, caused by loss of helium pressure that controlled the steering jets. Neil Armstrong ejected safely. 1968 December 8, LLTV No. 1 crashed at Ellington AFB, Texas, caused by failure of the fly-by-wire control system. MSC test pilot Joseph Elgranti ejected safely. 1971 January 29, an LLTV crashed at Ellington AFB, Texas, caused by failure of the fly-by-wire control system. NASA test pilot Stuart Present ejected safely. 1960 July 16, injured during centrifuge training, Soviet cosmonaut Anatoly Yakovlevich Kardashev suffered pinpoint hemorrhages of the spine during centrifuge training. Due to the injuries he was grounded by the medical staff and retired from the cosmonaut group on 7 April 1962. 1961 August 19, parachute training accident, broken left foot, cosmonaut Pavel Belyayev broke his left foot during a parachute jump related to cosmonaut training. As a result, he was out of cosmonaut training until 30 August 1962. 
1961 September 2, T-33 jet engine failure, emergency landing, astronauts Gus Grissom and Alan Shepard experienced a broken rotor blade in the jet engine of their T-33 jet while flying a training mission over Lake Erie. Grissom made an emergency landing at Selfridge Air Force Base near Detroit, Michigan. Both astronauts were unharmed and the aircraft was not further damaged. The astronauts left in the same jet a day later. 1962 October 22, Experimental Paraglider, Hard Landing, Astronaut Gus Grissom was piloting an experimental paraglider at Edwards Air Force Base, CA, that was towed aloft by another aircraft and released. The paraglider made a hard landing that crumpled the nose wheel. The craft remained upright and Grissom walked away unhurt. The craft was part of experiments that were to lead up to landing Gemini spacecraft using a similar paraglider wing on dry land. 1963 March 13, F-102 jet, ran off paved runway, astronaut Elliot C. was piloting a NASA F-102 fighter jet used to maintain astronaut pilot proficiency when it ran off the end of the paved runway while landing at Ellington AFB near Houston, Texas. Officials said the astronaut landed the plane too fast and was unable to stop on the paved portion of the runway. Astronaut C. was not injured and the aircraft was not damaged and was flown later in the day by another astronaut. 1964 August 25, simulated moon walk in spacesuit, fall on steep, rocky lava bed, astronaut Walter Cunningham was wearing a full spacesuit with 13.5 kg backpack. He was simulating a moon walk on a rocky lava bed near Bend, Oregon. While climbing a 15-meter, 30-degree slope, he was 3 meters from the top when he fell backward. At first, observers thought he might roll all the way to the bottom of the slope, but Cunningham spread out to slow his motion and a nearby engineer also provided assistance. Cunningham was uninjured, but there was a slight pressure loss in the suit from a glove puncture. 1964 November 4, T-38 jet, ran off wet runway, landing gear damaged, astronauts Charles. Pete. Conrad and James Lovell were landing at Ellington AFB near Houston, Texas, during a rainstorm, on a flight from Washington, D.C. They were returning from the funeral of astronaut Theodore C. Freeman. They were unable to stop their aircraft on the wet runway. The aircraft ran off the runway and into a muddy, grassy area damaging the landing gear. The two astronauts were not injured in the mishap. 1966 January 14, altitude chamber, oxygen valve explosion, fire, astronaut Edward Gibbons was testing the Gemini 9 Astronaut Maneuvering Unit AMU while wearing a spacesuit in an altitude chamber at the Manned Spacecraft Center Johnson Space Center, Houston, Texas. While in the altitude chamber, an oxygen valve exploded outside the altitude chamber burning four technicians and sending one of them to the hospital. One of the technicians' clothes was set on fire and the other three technicians suffered minor burns extinguishing the burning clothing. Astronaut Givens was not injured in the incident. 1966 January 28, zero-G training, dislocated shoulder requiring surgery, astronaut Don F. Izell underwent surgical repair of his left shoulder due to a dislocation received during zero-G flight training in 1965. The shoulder was re-injured during physical training at the manned spacecraft Johnson Space Center later the same year. 1966 July 18, T-38 jet takeoff abort, ran off runway, astronauts Edward H. White and Russell Schweikert experienced an engine failure during takeoff from El Paso International Airport, TX, on their T-38 jet aircraft. The takeoff was aborted and the aircraft ran off the end of the runway, suffering a nose gear collapse and blowouts of both main landing gear tires. The astronauts were flying from Houston, Texas to Los Angeles, California. The stop in El Paso was to refuel. Both astronauts were uninjured and continued their journey on a commercial airliner. 1966 October 8, parachute training accident, broken foot, cosmonaut Georgi Grechko broke his foot during a parachute jump related to training for the Soyuz 7K manned lunar flyby missions. The injury forced him out of training for those lunar flyby missions. 1968 May 15, parachute training, fracture, astronaut Dr. Robert A. R. Parker suffered a fractured coccyx, the final bone in the spine, while taking part in parachute training. The injury occurred at Williams Air Force Base, Arizona. The injury was not thought to be serious. 
1968 September 26, physical training, fractured collarbone. Astronaut Dr. Carl G. Hanai suffered a fractured collarbone during a physical development class as part of astronaut training. He was placed on non flying status for about five weeks. 1969, rope training accident, serious leg injury. Cosmonaut Vladimir Kovalyonik suffered a serious injury to his leg while rope training, climbing, during cosmonaut training. He recovered and was able to continue cosmonaut training and graduated 18 August 1969. 1969 August 2, helicopter landing accident, during NASA astronaut helicopter flight training, astronaut Edward G. Gibson, flying solo, landed a helicopter on a mud flat, near Laporte, TX. The helicopter sank in the mud, flipped over and its spinning rotor blades tore the craft apart. Gibson was uninjured. 1969 August 15, T-33 jet crash landing, astronaut Joseph Kerwin made a belly landing on a foam-covered runway in his T-33 jet trainer at Ellington AFB near Houston, Texas due to a landing gear problem. He survived the crash landing uninjured. Topic: 1970-1979 1971 January 23, helicopter crash, Eugene Cernan was flying a Bell 47G helicopter as part of his lunar module training as backup commander for Apollo 14. The helicopter crashed into the Indian River at Cape Canaveral, Florida. Cernan nearly drowned because he was not wearing a life vest and received some second-degree burns on his face and singed hair. According to official reports at the time, the crash was the result of mechanical failure. Later accounts, written by Cernan himself in an autobiography, admit he was flying too low and showing off for nearby boaters. The helicopter dipped a skid into the water and crashed. James McDivitt, an Apollo manager at the time, demanded that Cernan be removed from flight status and not be given command of Apollo 17. Cernan was defended by Dickie Slayton and given the Apollo 17 command. James McDivitt resigned as an Apollo manager shortly after the Apollo 16 mission. 1971 April 2, T-38 jet, rear cockpit canopy lost, takeoff aborted, astronaut Richard Truly was taking off from Kellogg Field, Battle Creek, ME in a NASA T-38 jet. During the takeoff roll, the rear cockpit canopy flew up the aircraft. Astronaut Truly aborted the takeoff and was not injured. The aircraft suffered minor damage. 1972 May 10, T-38 jet, electrical malfunction, out of fuel, ejected, astronaut Charles Pete Conrad ejected safely from his NASA T-38 jet near Bergstrom AFB, Austin, Texas. He landed about 90 meters from the base operations building. An electrical malfunction that caused loss of instruments during severe weather was listed by the review board as a major factor in the accident. Conrad was on a flight from Dover, Delaware via Dobbins AFB, GA to Ellington AFB, Houston, Texas. Due to bad weather, he was diverted first to Hobby Airport, Houston because Ellington AFB was below minimums for landing. While on final approach to Hobby Airport, in darkness, heavy rain and lightning, the T-38 generator failed, causing a loss of cockpit lighting and partial loss of navigation instruments. Conrad broke off the approach and tried to climb above the bad weather. The generator was brought back online along with cockpit lighting. Because of the electrical problems, he requested a diversion to an airport that was under visual flight rules. Controllers sent him toward Randolph AFB, San Antonio, Texas. It soon became apparent the T-38 did not have enough fuel to reach Randolph AFB. Controllers then diverted him to Bergstrom AFB. The T-38 ran out of fuel as it reached Bergstrom AFB. Conrad ejected at 1,100 meters. The aircraft was destroyed. He was taken to the base hospital for a routine examination and returned to Houston later that night. 1974 February 6, T-38 jet, landing mishap, gear collapse, astronaut Dr. Carl G. Hanais was involved in a landing mishap in his T-38 jet aircraft while landing at Bergstrom AFB near Austin, Texas in low visibility conditions. He was on an instrument flight from Ellington AFB near Houston, Texas. A landing gear on the T-38 collapsed and the aircraft was damaged. Hanais was not injured. 
1979 October 19, altitude chamber accident, electrical burns, brain concussion. Cosmonaut Alexander S. Viktorenko was conducting tests in an altitude chamber as part of cosmonaut training. Due to errors by a person operating the altitude chamber, Viktorenko was struck by an electric current, causing burns, a fall, and a brain concussion. He was unconscious for 17 hours. As a result of the injuries and recovery, he did not complete his cosmonaut training until 24 February 1982. 1980–1989 1982 May 21, T-38 jet struck by lightning, damaged, astronaut Gordon Fullerton was piloting a solo flight of a NASA T-38 jet aircraft from Houston, Texas to Cleveland, Ohio to make a speaking engagement. While on final approach to Cleveland's Hopkins Airport, his aircraft was struck by lightning. Fullerton landed safely but a post-landing inspection showed that a 2-foot by 6-foot section had been torn from the tail of the aircraft. The astronaut later commented. It felt like a howitzer hit the cockpit. It was as strong a lightning bolt as I've ever experienced. 1982 December 1, T-38 jet landing accident, ran off runway. Astronaut Thomas K. Mattingly was not injured when his T-38 jet aircraft ran off the runway at Ellington AFB near Houston, Texas. The aircraft ended up 30 feet off the end of the runway during a landing in heavy rain. There was substantial damage to the wings, nose and landing gear of the aircraft during the incident. 1984 April 5, T-38 jet, struck birds, engine flameout, aborted takeoff, astronaut James Van Hoffen was taking off in a T-38 jet on the KSC Space Shuttle runway for a training flight. This was training for the STS-41C mission of Challenger that launched the next day. At about 1.5 kilometers, 1 mile, down the 4.8 kilometers, 3 miles runway, while going 260 kilometers per hour, 162 miles per hour, his jet struck a flock of birds, causing the right engine to flame out. He applied the brakes and safely aborted takeoff without further aircraft damage. Bird remains were later found on the nose landing gear and the aircraft engine needed to be removed and inspected for further damage. 1987 February 24, T-38 jet engine failure, fire, emergency landing, astronaut Brewster Shaw and NASA pilot Robert Rivers experienced an engine failure and fire in their T-38 jet aircraft. The jet was on approach to Los Alamitos Army Air Field, CA, when the right engine failed and caught fire. There was smoke in the cockpit. The crew chose to land the plane rather than bail out because it was over a populated area. They landed successfully and climbed out of the burning jet. The jet experienced substantial damage. The crew was taken to the Long Beach Naval Hospital for observation and later released. 1989 May 15, T-38 jet, near mid-air collision with airliner, astronaut David M. Walker was flying a NASA T-38 jet into Dulles Airport near Washington, D.C. for a presidential ceremony. At about 8 kilometers 5 miles from the airport at an altitude of 2,100 meters, he came within 150 meters of colliding with a Pan Am Airbus 310 airliner. He was later found at fault for the incident and suspended from flying for 60 days by NASA. He was also removed as commander of the STS-44 mission. 1990–1991 1993 May 3, emergency egress training, broken bones in foot, astronaut drive M. Rhea Seddon broke four metatarsal bones in her left foot during emergency egress training from the Johnson Space Center Orbiter Training Facility. She was using an inflatable slide similar to those used on airliners during landing emergency evacuations. While sliding down the slide, her left foot became pinned under her, breaking four minor bones. She returned to full-time training after a few weeks. 1993 May 28, frostbitten fingers in thermal vacuum chamber, while training in a thermal vacuum chamber for the STS-61 Hubble repair mission, astronaut Story Musgrave suffered frostbite on the fingertips of his right hand. He was working in a spacesuit in the chamber for about six hours at low temperatures. His fingertips were blackened and numb from the incident. Surgery was not required and they were sufficiently healed in time for the repair mission in December 1993. 
1993 October 16, medical experiment, heart and breathing stopped, astronaut Bonnie Dunbar suffered an allergic reaction to an experimental drug and collapsed during medical tests at Johnson Space Center, Texas. Her breathing and heart stopped and she was rushed to a local hospital. She recovered and was later declared in good health. The experiment involved injecting dye and a drug to measure the effect of weightlessness on fluids in the body. Topic 2000 to 2009. 2000 March 15th, sprained ankle delays shuttle launch. Astronaut and commander of the STS-101 mission, James D. Halsell, sprained his ankle climbing down steps inside of a space shuttle simulator at Johnson Space Center, Houston. This caused him to miss some training activities and delayed the launch of his mission by about a week. 2003 December 2, NASA Gulfstream II shuttle training aircraft, engine thrust reverser fell off aircraft in flight, a NASA Gulfstream II shuttle training aircraft STA was flying a series of simulated shuttle landings to the Kennedy Space Center shuttle landing facility. On board the aircraft was an unidentified NASA astronaut pilot and two training personnel. The aircraft was on final approach at 13,000 feet when onboard instruments indicated a malfunction on one of the jet engine thrust reversers. The aircraft landed safely. A post-landing inspection showed that one of the 585-pound, 4-foot-wide, 5-foot-long thrust reversers had fallen off the aircraft. Divers later found the thrust reverser on the bottom of the nearby Banana River. An investigation showed that a bolt failed, causing the part to fall off the aircraft. 2003 December 17, SpaceshipOne, landing accident, ran off runway, while piloting SpaceshipOne on its first powered test flight, 11P, astronaut Brian Binney reached a peak altitude of 20.7 km 13 miles and exceeded the speed of sound. Upon landing, SpaceshipOne experienced a roll oscillation that caused the left main gear to collapse. The craft ran off the runway and rolled to a stop in soft sand. The craft sustained minor damage, later repaired, and the pilot was uninjured. 2010-2019 Non-astronaut fatalities Fatalities caused by rocket explosions This list excludes deaths caused by military operations, either by deliberate detonations, or accidental during production, for example German V-2 rockets reportedly caused on average an estimated six deaths per operational rocket just during its production stages. Other non-astronaut fatalities. Topic. See also Criticism of the Space Shuttle Program Fallen Astronaut International Association for the Advancement of Space Safety Lost Cosmonauts Skylab Mutiny Space Exposure Space Shuttle International Space Station Maintenance Notes <laughs>